This is an African map. Looking south, you'll notice lush flora and loads of greenery. However, things change when you travel north. It is the world's largest desert, spanning many nations and containing miles and miles of dune formation. The Sahara Desert comprises 9 million square kilometers in total, which is enough to swallow France 18 times. Did you realize, though, that thousands of years ago, this enormous length of infertile sand representing a third of the African continent was covered in rich vegetation? Where did the Sahara go, and what is going on with it now? Let's take a look at the disturbing discoveries uncovered by scientists beneath the Sahara Desert in this video. The Atlantic Ocean is bordered on the west by the Sahara, on the east by the Red Sea, on the north by the Mediterranean Sea, and on the south by the Sahel Savanna. Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tuzinia make up the vast desert. The sand dune fields of the Sahara Desert are frequently portrayed in films. The dunes can rise to nearly 600 feet in height. However, they only cover around 15% of the desert's total area. Mountains, plateaus, sand and gravel-covered plains, salt flats, basins, and depressions are among the other topographical features. How did the Sahara transform from a tropical zone to the hard, dry territory it is today? This question's answer takes us thousands of years back in time. Periodic periods of dampness and aridity have long plagued the Sahara. Small wobbles in the tilt of the Earth's orbital axis create these oscillations, which modify the angle at which solar radiation reaches the atmosphere. During the West African monsoon season, more energy from the sun has poured in at regular periods throughout Earth's history. During these periods, which are known as African humid periods, substantially more rain falls over North Africa. Additional rain brings more flora, rivers, and lakes to the region. But something weird happened between 8,000 and 4,500 years ago. The transition from humid to dry occurred far faster in some areas than could be explained just by orbital precession, culminating in the modern-day Sahara Desert. Archaeologist David Wright explains what happened next in his study. As he looked over the archaeological and environmental data, primarily from sediment cores and pollen records, he noticed what appeared to be a pattern. There was a similar alteration in the sorts and variety of plants wherever the archaeological record demonstrated the presence of pastoralists, that is, people with their domesticated animals. Every time humans and their goats and cattle hopped across the grasslands, it was as if they had left a trail of brush and desert in their wake. This led right to the conclusion that overgrazing the grasses reduced atmospheric moisture. You know, plants emit moisture, which causes clouds, and increased albedo. He believes that this may have accelerated the end of the humid period beyond what orbital shifts might explain. These nomadic humans may have also utilized fire as a land management tool, which would have accelerated the desert spread. Do you picture whales frolicking on the sweeping sand dunes when you think of the Sahara Desert? While this is exceedingly doubtful because whales cannot survive outside of water, there is evidence that the present whale's relatives previously swam around in the scorching African desert. In 1902, a group of geologists led their camels into a valley in Egypt's western desert. Strong winds had molded sandstone rocks into unusual shapes over centuries, and the moonlight shone brightly at night, making the sand glitter like gold. Because of the scorching summer heat, a nearby hill was dubbed Mountain of Hell. However, whale bones were discovered in this dry valley. The skeletons ranged to a length of 50 feet, with vertebrae as thick as campfire logs. They dated back 37 million years to a time when this area and all of northern Egypt were covered by a shallow tropical sea. The archaic creatures under the sand would eventually provide answers to one of evolution's most vexing questions, how whales became whales, even if the geologists didn't recognize it at the time. The existence of feet was one indication discovered in these long-dead whales. Whales were long thought to be terrestrial mammals that progressively lost their four legs as they moved into the ocean over millions of years. Modern whales have vestigial hind limb bones as proof of this. But it wasn't until paleontologists discovered legs and knees in hundreds of whale fossils unearthed in Wadi Hitan that the change was clearly seen. Although older-footed whale fossils have been discovered, the abundance and degree of preservation at Wadi Hitan are unparalleled. The valley, which is about a three-hour drive from Cairo, is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, with 14,000 visitors every year. Paleontologists believe that whales' landlubber ancestors were scavengers living near the sea, similar to deer or pigs. They began spending more time in the water some 55 million years ago, 
first eating dead fish along the shore, then hunting prey in the shallows, and finally wading deeper. Some of them developed features that made hunting in water easier. They grew bigger over time, as they no longer had to hold their full body weight at sea, their backbones lengthened, and rib cages expanding. There are two types of fossils found in the valley. Basilosaurus was a massive dinosaur with an eel-like body. The Dorodon, which was smaller but heavier, resembled a modern whale until its mouth opened, revealing a jaw laced with serrated daggers inside of peg-like teeth. More than 75 whale fossils were discovered in the middle of Chile's Atacama Desert. Scientists have disagreed over how they got there. Have you heard about Atlantis, the lost city? You'll be surprised to learn how this famous city is linked with the forthcoming Sahara Desert discovery. This brings us to the Sahara's eye, also known as the Rishar structure or Gelba Rishar. It's a massive bullseye-shaped geological structure in the Sahara Desert. The structure runs across a 40-kilometer stretch of Mauritania's desert. Only a few nearby nomadic tribes were aware of the formation for generations. The Gemini astronauts initially shot it in the 1960s as a marker to measure the progress of their landing sequences. Later, the Landsat satellite captured more photographs and supplied data on the size, height, and extent of the formation. The eye of the Sahara was first thought to be an impact crater formed when a spacecraft collided with the surface. Long investigations of the rocks inside the structure, on the other hand, demonstrate that it is wholly Earth-based, pushing geologists to seek other explanations. The eye of the Sahara, according to geologists, is a geologic dome. The formation comprises of rocks that are at least 100 million years old, with some dating back to the dawn of life on Earth. Igneous volcanic deposits and sedimentary strata emerge when wind blows dust and water deposits, sand and mud together. In the eye area today, geologists can find kimberlite, carbonatites, black and rhyolites, among other forms of igneous rock. There is, however, another reason for the Sahara eye. According to research, the ring city that Plato mentioned in the 4th century BC can be found in the African country of Mauritania, which means it has been lurking in plain sight all this time. Since Greek philosopher Plato first imagined a strange island that seemingly vanished in 350 BC, the search for Atlantis has continued. Solon, a Greek statesman, is said to have passed on facts about Atlantis to Plato. It is alleged to not only be the precise size and shape that Plato portrayed it to be, 23.5 kilometers across and circular, but that mountains he described to the north can be seen pretty clearly on satellite photos as evidence of old rivers that Plato claimed ran around the city. Plato claimed that Atlantis was sunk beneath the waves after being destroyed in a single day and night of woe. When Atlantis is said to have vanished some 11,500 years ago, the scientific records show the Earth endured major climate change. It was also pointed out that satellite imagery mimics the aftermath of a tsunami in a way that no one alive today would have seen. Take a look at the eye of the Sahara satellite map. Isn't it as though the entire region was blasted by flowing water or a tsunami? The Sahara Desert continues to hold secrets, and the latest is about a device discovered there whose functions are unknown to this day. It's the Clayton Ring, and it's even more perplexing since these rings were discovered in the most hostile section of Egypt's Sahara Desert. Clayton rings are conical pottery cylinders, open at both ends, named after geographer and desert explorer P. A. Clayton, who lived from 1896 to 1962. They always have one or more perforated clay discs that are slightly larger than the ring's smaller aperture, but do not fit as covers. Some were constructed as a set by potters, while others, like the ones on show, were reworked from antique ceramic jars and sherds. Egyptians living beside the Nile did not use these artifacts. Instead, during Egypt's first dynasties, known as the Sheikh Muftar civilization, they were a significant element of the equipment of nomadic herders living in the darkler oasis. Clayton rings and discs have been discovered in the oasis amid seasonal hunting and herding camps of this civilization, but also in catches up to 300 kilometers distance from permanent water supplies and beyond any herdsman or hunter's safe ranging range. What made these items so important that individuals went to such lengths to transport Clayton rings across the desert? Thanks for watching. This is a question that remains unanswered. Let us know what you think of the Sahara findings in the comment section.